Oh, hi, everyone. So it gives me a great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, which is me. So, hey, I spoke very briefly at um, EMF 2016 um, on one of the lightning talks. At the same time, on stage A was a talk about sex robots. So uh, I have questions about those, but uh, and I've learned don't compete with sex robots. So it uh, just doesn't work on any level. So anyway, right. Um, yeah, so this is my talk about 101 hacks for late Soviet water towers, or one in particular. Um, and yeah, I haven't got my contact details, but if you Google Latvian water tower, you'll find me. So, right, um, obligatory speaker slide. Uh, what you need to know about me, um, I'm half Latvian, quarter English, quarter Irish, and the unicorn is because that's how I saw Latvia when I was younger. Um, it used to be behind the Iron Curtain, part of the USSR, and it was mystical fairyland that you hear about where everyone is equal and you can't visit. And because it's forbidden, you know, human nature is, we're interested, we want that. And actually, it sounds good, everyone being equal. You know, I was a staunch communist until the age of 10, when you sort of learnt that uh, it's not quite that good. So, anyway, um, yeah, Myers-Briggs type indicators. If you know about those, great. If you don't, Google it. It's endlessly interesting. So I come up as being slightly introverted, so this is a push for me, um, but also sort of interested in lots of different things. And um, so hence the EMF is brilliant. So, right, um, yeah, in 2016, I was 40 years old, um, and I'm probably one of the old ones here at CMF camp. Um, who else is over 40? Oh, a fair few. Okay, so half of you, half of you will relate to this, and the other half can learn and take notes for what you'll have to come. So, uh, because, uh, yeah, I, um, I absolutely did not have a midlife crisis. Uh, I did fly Spitfire, I did do the Cresta run, and I did <laughs> accidentally buy or become the custodian of a very fine Latvian water tower. Uh, so, but um, that's not a midlife crisis at all. So, so anyway, I don't know how much you know about Latvia, um, but most people tend to think of um, boozy weekends for stag do's and stuff, and you've got the beer bus bike thing and shooting AK-47s. Or actually, they've upgraded to AK-102s now for health and safety reasons in the shooting range and partying and all that stuff, uh, which is great sometimes, but I prefer the deeper side of the country. And, and actually... There's a lot more to Latvia than, yeah, partying. And actually, this year, they had the, the hashtag I'm introvert for the London Book Fair and the little cartoon there, which I quite relate to anyway. And, um, yeah, there's a whole, whole side to the country which they're branding, and I suppose it appeals to half, half the people, but it, it's sort of true of the nation. But EMF and, um, yeah, EMF and Latvia, very similar things. So EMF, rule one of Hackspace, don't be on fire. Very good rule. Oh, no, rule zero. Sorry, not rule one. I've no idea what rule one is, but rule zero is don't be on fire. Whereas in Latvia, we like to challenge that. And if there's a fire, you'll find a Latvian jumping over it, um, hopefully not getting burnt to death. So, and, uh, yeah, so beer here is very good. Beer in Latvia, brilliant. Money back if you don't like it. Um, few words of Latvian to learn. Ludzo, di Ludzo divus alus is please two beers. So I'm going to go through this talk quite quickly, but if anyone's got any questions later, you can go to the bar and ask that. Um, so other things about Latvia, um, yeah, I have a mug to prove it. It has the fifth fastest internet in the world. I think that's a slightly out of date stat, but because, um, yeah, because of the legacy, actually the first time I visited there um, was pre any mobile phones and to call home I had to go to a host box and have the operator connect to call and they had to go out and pay for it. And to tot it up, they tot it up on an abacus. And that's something I'd heard about from you know, school and ancient Egypt and stuff. And um, actually, it was super quick. There's no batteries, and they're not going to blue screen. Um, so it's pretty appropriate technology. But it's now come a long way, and they've got fiber and stuff. Actually, yeah, the same mug is a bit dodgy, because on the other side, uh, the most popular product in Latvia is potato. Um, so I'm not sure quite what the question they were asking is. But actually, that's um, indicative of how a lot of things have worked in history there. So actually, formally in history, when the Soviets um, came came in and took over, effectively. They were invited by the Latvian government, and they voted for that to happen. And it was basically a choice of, uh, yo, vote for this or die. So, um, yeah, they did that. I doubt there was a gun to heads for potatoes. So anyway, um, oh yeah, back to the unicorn. So actually, the Baltics are very tech-focused, um, tech and you've got um, more unicorns per head of population in Estonia, neighboring, than anywhere else in the world. So roll over Silicon Valley. And nobody can afford to live in Silicon Valley anymore, I gather. Um, if anyone's got a house there, you're doing very well. So, yeah. Um, and if you're radio ham, uh, here we get 400 watts. In Latvia, you get a kilowatt to play with. 
So anyway, um, yeah, and actually also housing. Yeah, so as I was saying, so I looked up yesterday, um, 85,000 pounds buys you a single garage in Twickenham or somewhere like that. Um, yeah, not much. Whereas I also, um, yeah, so the story of this anyway, I got bored at my desk. Um, you know, I work in IT, it's stressful. And occasionally you think, oh, the grass is greener. Let's go and live on a farm and just have the easy life and the good life and be simple. And uh, there's a website called ss.com, and it's not that SS. It's uh, the equivalent of Craigslist, come eBay, and it's super addictive, I guarantee you. Um, and as you can see, it's all in Latvian. Um, but thanks to Google Translate, it turns into English. Can you, can you read this from the front? Or anyway, so there's a part on real estate, and I look at it occasionally thinking, oh, let's have a look at a farm, something like that. And, um, and again, go into that section. And uh, yeah, I'm learning Latvian slowly, and there is, is this to go to work. Yeah, uh, there's a very good one here. So there's 235 entries for uh, Realtor Pakal um which if we tr go to Google Translate, who says machine language uh, learning is bad? So it says thieves services. So uh, that's pretty good, I thought. Good for Google. But yeah, so I looked last night at what's available in Latvia. Uh, what can you get for your money? And here's one, okay. Uh, so 10,433 or 34 euros. Uh, buys you 18 apartments, nine of them are three room or three bed, and the others are studios, <laughs> plus a hectare of land in a looks which is a really nice area. So that works out about 500 pounds each. So you're not going to go far wrong there. So um, yeah, Silicon Valley versus Latvia. Um, again, good value. But I came across this ad for a water tower, and I, it was in the auction section. And I thought, well, actually, let's learn about the auctions and the things that have attracted me about it. One, it was on the date of my birthday, and I thought, oh, that'd be a good excuse to go over, see how the process works, and actually, I'm not going to get it, because a telephone company, Vodafone or someone, they're going to buy it, put masks at the top, they've got deep pockets, I haven't. Um, so no chance of auction fever and eBay and all that. And, um, oh, and there's a shed and stuff as well. So I read a bit more about it. Um, and actually, on the details, um, you probably can't read this, but it's, uh, it basically says, um, technical situation, yeah, no electricity, uh, water and drainage, none. So it's wa water tower, no water. So that tells you something about the collapse of the Soviet system, that uh, they didn't get it connected. So anyway, I registered for the auction, um, filled in the form, sent a deposit and all that good stuff, and uh, then had some time. And I thought I'd learn about it, because actually, how do these, you see pictures of these Japanese auctions and stuff, you, you, you know, I didn't expect to understand the process. And so in the ad, it's 40 meters high, and I'm no good, I've no idea how many square meters this is. Some people might know, I have no idea. So I looked up, what's 40 meters high? And the Statue of Christ in Rio de Janeiro is, I haven't been there, so I can't really relate to that. And the Space Shuttle, that's 40 meters high, I've seen one of those, and I sort of had the picture of that sitting next to the tower, and um, yeah, I could, I could envision that. So anyway, so on the day of the auction, I flew over. You can do um, Latvia and back in a day if you want via Ryanair. It's um, pretty hard work, so it's 6 a.m. flight out, 9 a.m. or 10 p.m. back, but you can do it. So I thought I'd go for a pleasant day and all that. And uh, anyway, by the time I got to the auction house, uh, well, the privatised agency, they came in, uh, so I came in, and they said, oh, Mr. Fitzgerald. We were wondering who was, going to, who was uh, registered for the uh, auction. So, uh, you're the only person registered, so um, you asked five euros and it's yours. And uh, right, so um, I wasn't really ready for that. But um, so Grand Designs obviously hasn't come to Latvia yet. So, um, so well, obviously, I, I, this was sight unseen. I hadn't seen the thing. So the first thing I did was I filled in a few forms and got a taxi to go down and um, had a look at it. So yeah, um, so what did I find? Um, Basically, yeah, for sale sign on it, there's an open door, sort of open door down the side there. So there is no door. So I thought, first thing, oh, okay, well, we've got to have policies, that, you know, coming from an IT background. First thing, open door policy. Yeah, Latvians are inviting people, so we'll have an open door policy. And uh, so I, I went in, um, oh, sorry, next slide. Yeah, and um, yeah, so we've got the door. I went in and climbed to the top. And um, yeah, the view from the top, um, do you see things like the lampposts and stuff? Normally, we look up at lampposts, and it's very high. It's in a very nice area, actually, in Yermola, which is the seaside. And um, yeah, it's scary up at the top, <laughs> which is good. Uh, so anyway, yeah, climbed up, went down, had a look around, and uh, had a look at the shed or the guardhouse at the bottom, which had a really nice portrait of Lenin in it. No, was it Lenin or Stalin? Whoa, I should get that right. <laughs> but anyway, so did, um, got that together, and then um, went back to the airport. So uh, I thought to myself, well, actually, well, <laughs> what am I going to do with it now? Um, and in the great tradition of lists of 101 things, I thought, well, I have to start 101, a list of 101 things to do with a water tower. 
first thing, let's learn about it. And I started learning up about them. And it's incredible. When you start looking at stuff, you start seeing them everywhere. But I found the British Water Tower Appreciation Society. And I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to... And actually, interestingly, um, normally it's five pounds a year to join. But if you own a water tower, it's free. So the fact that I spent five euros on it... Um, <laughs> It was a bargain. I quit in already. So, um, I, yeah, I don't know if you can read all the stuff, but it basically says there are lots of ways that a water tower can kill you um, and take care, which is probably sage advice. So at this point, I thought, well, I'm going to need two lists. Um, yeah, one of 101 things to do with the water tower and one of 101 ways it'll kill you, which sort of helps keep you balanced because I, yeah, I don't want to experience the 1.67 seconds of saying goodbye. So anyway, um, so... Yeah, I went back and a little bit later to do more forms and learn about the tower. And actually, it was the weekend of the big NHS hack. So this was um, the view of the lake was me sitting there with my laptop working for most of the weekend, helping make sure that everyone was good and patched and all that stuff. Um, but also explored the tower and did some cleaning up and felt like being in conservation at school. Um, so I went around and um, picked up uh, litter from around the tower. And uh, so, yeah on the 101 things to do with water tower list, have parties. And it looks like there'll be some jolly good parties there already. Um, and why wasn't I invited? <laughs> so, <laughs> but there we are. Um, and, um, but I, thought, I found quite a few bottles inside the tower. So I thought, yeah, the open door policy, um, nice idea, but actually we're going to need a door because um, alcohol and being really high up is not, uh, it's not good. And yeah, I mean, the seaside in Yamla is really, really nice. Latvia is beautiful. It's been likened to Miami Beach. Um, as I say, you see towers everywhere once you start spotting them. And on the way here, I keep looking at them and, you know, you sort of, out the corner of your eye, they catch them. So many different designs. Um, and, um, yeah, next time I went back, they built a park next to the um, lake, which is really nice. Thank you, Latvian government. Um, so I was then learning about the design and construction of it. And interesting, so it's all modular. So these, these are built, and it's actually something from the Soviet system. Um, a lot of things, aeroplanes, bridges, all sorts. They're all designed to be built with fairly unskilled or conscripted labor, and so aircraft are maintained by that. And so these are pre-constructed. Uh, it's probably how you know, many houses are done now, um, in modules, and they're put together. And they're actually, some of these designs, you have four balls on mine in the sort of slightly, in, uh, slightly impossible style, but it is lined up, so it's not going to fall over. And they build them with, um, inside, in the levels, there's rebar, and they're bonded together basically in the same way they use um, to do uh, railway construction. Um, and it's the same equipment and probably the same materials, but it's, it's sort of really thick rebar um, that holds the weight of it. And then, yeah, so going up, you, um, you have ladders and levels, um, 12, 12 stories up, basically. So it's a good thing to stop and take your breath as you go. Oh, um, I've got an update that needs a reboot. Let me say no to that. Anyway, um, and yeah, you go up to the top, and more ladders up to the very, very top. So um, this is the bottom of the um, water containers, which, uh, hope, which are meant to store about 40 tons of water. I haven't actually measured it. But um, so there are two pipes that go into a tower, one for the out, one for the in. The in one either was never connected or has been cut off. Um, and um, yeah, I found from the plate that this one actually on here, you can see it was built in May um, 1987, so that age is it. And up at the top, yeah, so this is what you get up at the top. I said it was scary up at the top. Um, there is no, well, yes, there's the rail around the side, but if you slip, you're off, bye-bye. So it strikes the fear of God into me. Some of my cousins work on wind farms, and they're totally happy at the top, but uh, which scares me even more. Um, and you can look down into the tank, they've got a ladder down there, and it used to just fill by overflowing if it did ever work. So, yeah, um, one of the things I've learned about as well is I've been reading up... And actually, the sort of history, the architecture, it's quite interesting. And um, there's a story of how the, how the tower came to be designed. And I gather that in the late 70s, under the command economy and the five-year planning, there was a meeting of whichever design bureau with a uh, comrade, someone saying, yeah, we, I, I won't try doing the Russian accent, it's, or, or it's rubbish, so, um, or I'm rubbish at it basically saying, yeah, we need a new design for water towers to, you know, all the stats and all what they needed. And um, there were a group of engineers and architects there um, taking the specs. And um, as it seems to be a universal thing, if someone's bored in a meeting, there are some people who doodle. And I um, don't know if you've noticed, it seems to be, again, quite universal. There seems to be one piece of male anatomy which universally is doodled. And uh, you don't need too many prizes. <laughs> for guessing. And um, yeah, apparently one of the chaps at the back, Yuri, um, was doodling and um, 
he was noticed, he was caught. So he was caught out, oh, Yuri, what are you up to? Uh, and Yuri's a quick thinker, got to give him that. And um, basically, a couple of squiggles, few lines, turned upside down. Uh, new, design, new design, modular water tower, and oh, let's have a look. So you know, he came out to have a look. Uh, turned upside down. Ah! <laughs> yeah. You know what this looks like? Brilliant! This is the design we'll go with. We don't need any more. And we will show the Latvian people that they are well and truly fully part of the Soviet Union. <laughs> so, anyway, and that architect um, was Jura Skalberg. Um, I don't know if this is actually a true story. I'd really like to um, meet him and ask if there's any truth in that. Um, who knows? So, um, it could be. But he's built a whole load of buildings, and it's the same case with many other architects. And um, unfortunately, a lot of the buildings people build are then replaced if they're civic buildings over time. So the water towers are probably going to be his legacy. So right, what have I done with the tower since as well? Um, so, oh yeah, I've run a radio station up at the top, um, which was quite good fun. I've got great respect for those people who, um, or not people, the um, lightweight equipment. Because if you have to take lead acid batteries 12 stories up on ladders, um, antennas 12 stories up, and you get quite worn out doing it. So uh, lightweight stuff's good. Um, yeah, some of the stuff we've done, um, yeah, I've run a station. We took, I took part in a documentary about water towers um, done by a couple from Oregon, and um, that was great fun. And actually, there's a couple of things I learned. I mean, America's quite progressive in some things. It's like in Colorado, they've legalized um, stuff like cannabis, haven't they? But in Oregon, um, where Jessica and Ryan came from, or live, um, is illegal to fill your own car with fuel. So you have to pay some, you know, yeah, yeah, the pump attendant still has to do it, which I see so backward than land all three, but there we are, it's just a different world. Um, so other things, um, yeah, we experimented with music in the tower and put speakers in, and actually from the inside, it radiates outside. And I'm trying to organize a permanent electricity supply so that we can keep that going and run uh, Jeb Finer's long player, which would be great fun. So we've now got a door. So uh, it's, uh, there's a policy of everyone being welcome. Oh, sorry. but. Uh, yeah, this code to uh, just for health and safety is a nod to that. Um, and lots of learning and thinking. So there are lots and lots of other things um, that we can do with it. So um, on that, oh, sorry. Let's, uh, oh, sorry, one more. All right, so yeah, what's left to do? So uh, yeah, reverse the shrinking beam. That's something I've got to do. Um, so yeah, we've got very sick. I mean, it's basically, I've got this list of 101 things. I've not shown you everything here. Um, but actually, because you condition people a bit, once you get to number 70, it's really hard as well. So I, we welcome any ideas. Um, but yeah, we had some ideas like, so what records could we break? So um, the, um, yeah, so actually with this particularly phallic water tower, <laughs> I had a look, well actually, what's the world's biggest condom? And it's, uh, the record in the Guinness Book is uh, 20 meters high, from a, which went on a statue in France. So um, yeah, we, we, the Latvian people can, uh, can beat that, definitely, I'm sure. That'd be fun. And um, I don't know, it's fun with all these things, just sort of looking at what we can do. But it's, it's interesting. Um, but there's, yeah, there's all sorts of things. Actually, you, know, you could almost flood it and use it as a submarine escape uh, training pad and things like that, or a sundial and calibrate it. Um, and there's, there's an interesting thing as well. Of, um, so EMF loves fire, and that bins love fire. And yeah, you sort of think about fires, and I, I thought, well, let's put one of these beacons up at the top, so, you know, the flames. Because Latvia is 100 this year, um, so it's the 100th anniversary of the nation. So big parties, and there was a huge song festival. There will be a population bubble in nine months from, well, roughly March. Um, so anyway, and yeah, so we were thinking about flames, and I mean, there's, there's also things like the, there was a big thing for hands across the Baltic, which was everyone holding hands uh, for independence as a big protest, and the nations lining up. And there was another thought, of, again, of, okay, so if you think about flames and things on top, so what's the most famous flame? That's the Olympic flame. And actually, there's, there is a movement to, um, to actually bid for the Olympics in the Baltics in something like 2040 or thereabouts, which had been sort of interesting to get, get involved with a little bit. And um, you know, why not? And actually have it with the three nations. And um, I don't know, it's, it's sort of fun doing all these things and looking at what can be done. And um, yeah, we've got lots of ideas. I'd be interested to know what, what else people can uh, think of and, uh, and all that. So yeah, um, so anyway, yeah, so stuff with fire and getting the power sorted out and audio installations and just general having fun. So yeah, that's my last slide. So um, if anyone's got any questions, um, please let me know. Oh, right, actually, let's try something as well. So uh, I'm lazy, sorry, I'm lazy, so. 
um, we'll throw this over to questions. So are you good at catching? Oh, let's give it a go. I'm rubbish at throwing. Hey, <laughs> there you are. Is the, is the mic on here, the catch box? Go. So I was wondering if it's actually structurally sound and how do you make sure that it is? Uh, so, yes, I've had that checked, um, because the, oh, you've the next person in a minute, oh. um, if there is anyone else. Um, yeah, so the steel is pretty solid. It does need some touching up, um, but actually, I, the rust that you can see, I've been in there with um, sandpaper, and all the steel, it's actually really good steel, it's built to last, and you rust take it down, and um, you get nice shiny metal behind that. YouTube has wonderful videos of laser rust removal. I would love one of those machines if they weren't like 100 grand, but I, I lust after one of those. If anyone's got one and fancies lending it to me, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> but uh, cool. Um, any, any other questions? Oh, there's one at the back. Do you want to throw it, um, or maybe throw it sort of in, in the middle? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's quite fun. <laughs> and those come from that beer, by the way. Yeah, so that one arrived yesterday. Hello. Hi. Oh. Have you considered putting water in the water tower? I have thought of that, yes. Um, and what would the outcome? So actually the water used to come, um, there was a, there's a well the other side of the lake, which I think used to be connected because there was an industrial complex behind it. So yeah, we've, we've explored reconnecting it for its use, but there's nothing there now to serve. So that's why the water company was selling it off. And actually I was lucky because they, they had some of, the, some of the other bigger towers. They were going to auction those off. And there was a big sort of national outcry of, oh, these are too good to privatise and stuff. So I've got one of the, one of the, one of the few. So, yeah, um, does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> cool. Um, any, any other questions? Oh, so there's one over here. Do you want to... I'd throw it halfway. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. It's a good test to make sure this works. Let's, uh... Nope. Hi. Have you... Have you considered hiding the water tower behind a one-to-one -one scale picture of the space shuttle? Uh, sorry, say, say, say that again? Have you considered hiding it behind a one-to-one -one scale picture of the space shuttle? So of the... Space shuttle. Oh, right. The same I haven't. One of the things I would like to do, though, is... Um, so the Soviet Union and stuff was all about making things up and... Um, not making this up. I mean, the, yeah, so the Russian space shuttles. Apparently they flew, allegedly, maybe, possibly not, if we don't know. Um, but, yeah, that, 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 that could work. Or have it photoshopped. And I was thinking of photoshopping in pictures of Stalin to show that it's his favourite Latvian water tower and stuff as well. But, um, which, is, which is a sort of revisionist thing that sort of tends to get done, so why not? So, yeah. Um, sorry, does that answer your question? Sorry, thanks. Um, anyone else? Oh, oh, there's one, one at the back there, so, yeah. Cool. So given the... Oh, that's loud. That's right, I can hear you, that, that's good. Given the Soviet construction of concrete and rebar and everything else, and the amateur radio connection, have you considered turning it into a full-wave 40-metre antenna? Uh, so I took... So the antennas I took up, um, I, I took up a 40-metre and an 80-metre antenna, um, which were G-WIP antennas, um, and they're really, really good single-wire ones. Um, which actually they're Kevlar wire, and um, the uh, I'm, so I'm a member of the LFRs, Lance and Leffing Forest Radio Group, and uh, yeah, the uh, the Kevlar those those ones are banned there now. So they had one up at the um, secret nuclear bunker lately, and uh, a sort of tractor got caught in it. It pulled over the mast and broke the tractor, and the antenna was fine. <laughs> so um, yeah, I've, I've I've strung one up and took the radio up, and it worked pretty well. Um, I don't know what the actual resonant frequency of the uh, of the, of the steel itself is. That'd be fun to find out, maybe. Something to add to your list of things to check? Sorry, say, say again? Something to add to the list of things to oh, check. I guess, yeah, why not? Or, um, or feel free to uh, take your radio over and I'll let you know where it is. That's, uh, yeah, cool. Okay. Brilliant. Um, I think that's it. So, brilliant. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. So.